Hi, my name is James Catherall, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up in-ear monitors inside of MainStage. So some prerequisites on gear. You're gonna need an audio interface that has more than two outputs on it. So in this video, I'm gonna be using my Focusrite 18i20 along with my in-ear monitors. You can use basically any audio interface or a mixer to do this that has multiple different sets of outputs, and these principles will generally be the same. So if you are doing something like this and you're at the level where you're going out and performing and you want a main mix for the speakers and an in-ear monitor mix for yourself, I would highly suggest investing in an audio interface that has multiple outputs to be able to set this up. There are some really affordable level ones like the Focusrite 4i4 would be a great option as a starter to be able to have different sets of outputs where you can create different mixes while you're performing. It is possible to do this on an audio interface that only has two outputs. I would not suggest doing this, but if you're in a pinch and you really need to do it, then I'll talk you through that later. The reason I would suggest not doing this is because it requires your output to now be mono instead of being able to have a stereo main output for your audience or your listeners. With that said, let's hop over to the computer and we'll start checking out how to set this up. So the first part of this starts inside of my Focusrite 18i20. This is the Focusrite control software. Up at the top are all of my inputs, and at the bottom are my outputs. I have my main output right here. This is the monitor outputs, and then I'm gonna be using this down here. This is the second headphone jack in my Focusrite 18i20. I've labeled this as IEM, which stands for in-ear monitor. And now here in the main area of this, I have my two outputs at the bottom. This is my main output, which is gonna be playback one, two, and then this is my in-ear monitor, which is gonna be playback three, four. So for my monitor outputs, or my main output, I have playback one, two turned up, and I have playback three, four turned down. And we'll talk about why that's important as we go through the other steps. And then down here, this is my headphone jack output. I've pulled down playback one, two, which is my main output, and I've pulled up the in-ear monitor. So basically what I've done, I have two sets of stereo outputs set up in my focus right, and now my main output is getting playback one, two, and my headphone output is gonna be playback three, four. So now I have my in-ear monitor mix ready in my Focusrite 18i20. So I'm gonna put my in-ear monitor in. Now let's go inside of main stage and start setting it up. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the concert level and then I'm gonna create a new channel strip by pushing Control N and now I have my options and I wanna make sure I'm on an aux channel strip. My input, I want to be bus one and then my output, I wanna be three, four because that's the numbers I set up in my Focusrite 18i20. Now I've done that, I'm gonna hit create. Now it's just warning me that I'm creating a channel strip at the concert level, which I wanna do for this because I want this output three, four monitor mix to be set up on every single patch. So now I'll hit create. And then the last thing I'm gonna do at the concert level, I'm gonna to go to this aux channel strip, double click the bottom, and then relabel it as IEM or in-ear monitor. Now let's go to our first patch. I've loaded up one of my custom sample libraries called Mom's Piano, set up here in contact, sounds like this. Now, it's set up with its regular output. It's going to output one, two, and that's gonna be going to my main mix. But what you can't do is you can't have more than two outputs set up on a channel strip by default. I can't go and set this up to be output one, two, three, and four. So what I need to do is go up here where it says sends. I'm gonna long click there, and then I'm gonna scroll all the way up to bus one, and there's my IEM. So now I have basically a fader right here, this little circle. You can pull this up or down, and that controls how much is getting sent to that aux channel strip right here, that IEM. So if I play right now and you look at this level, nothing's gonna happen. Because currently I'm not sending anything there. But then when I pull this up, let's go up to here, we'll just pull it up to a random level, and then I play again. Now it's sending there and we can hear that in my in-ear monitor as well as coming out of my main speakers because it's going to both right now. So now what I've essentially done is I've created two separate mixes. I have my main mix and that's output one, two, and then I have my monitor mix right here and these are separate. So what's going to my ear is controlled by this level and then what's going to my main output is controlled by this fader. So one more step with this that'll make it even better with your mix. Right now what's gonna happen is if I pull these faders down and I start mixing live while I'm playing, it's also gonna affect the mix in my in-ear. So if I don't want that to happen, I can go back to my send, I'm gonna click and hold, and I can make it pre-fader. So now what that means is even if I pull this fader all the way down, 
it doesn't affect the level that's getting sent to this in-ear monitor. And that's good so that if I'm changing the mix for the audience and I'm making things different out there, it doesn't necessarily change the mix in my in-ear monitor. So I can set that up during my sound check or I can set it up beforehand and I can be really happy with my in-ear monitor. And then I can start balancing things for the venue that I'm in or wherever I'm performing to make sure it's good there without affecting my in-ear monitor mix. Other thing that's really nice with this, let's add another send. And this one's gonna be going to a reverb. So I'll go to bus two right here, and then I'm just gonna make this sort of a stock reverb preset. And now I'll pull this up. And then when I play, the main mix will have reverb, but my in-ear won't. So I can add reverb to it if I want. So if I go here, this is this reverb channel strip, it's on that four and a half second fine hall. If I click send, go to bus, and then I go back up to bus one. So once again, I can control how much reverb I'm getting in my in-ear without changing how much goes to the audience. So that's once again, just having those two separate mixes. I have the one that's going out through my main speakers for the audience to hear, and then I have the one in my ear that the audience can't hear. Now, not only can you change the levels of things based off of what the audience is hearing and what you're hearing, I can also add entirely new sounds that the audience won't hear and only I will hear. So for example, I have this metronome channel strip. So this is set to output one, two. I don't actually have to do a send. I'll just change the output right here to be output three, four. Now I can turn the metronome on and the audience won't hear it, but I'll hear it. So now metronome's going off. You guys can't hear it, but I hear it here in my in-ear monitor. So that's just another great part of being able to have those two separate mixes. And then you can also add all kinds of other things in here if you want that are pretty standard with monitor type of stuff. I can add an audio channel in this for a microphone that allows the different band members or different people to communicate with each other without it going out to the audience. And I just need to make sure I set it up the same way. I'll have an audio channel strip going to output three, four with a microphone. And that way it's only going to my in-ear monitor and it's not going out through my main mix. Now let's talk through what to do if you only have two outputs and you're in a pinch and you really need to set up these two separate mixes. What I need to do is go here, output one, two. And at the top, we can see these circles. When you have those two conjoined circles like that, that are like overlapping, almost kind of creating that Venn diagram type of image. If I click on it, it now separates it. So I have output one and output two, and now they're just one individual circle. So that's Logic and Mainstage's way of representing a stereo channel and a mono channel. So one circle means mono and two circles means stereo. So now I can make output one my main mix and then output two can be my monitor mix. So what I would need to do here for IEM is I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna click these circles. So now it's a mono channel. I'm gonna long click output three, four, go down to the bottom where it says mono, and then I'll make this output two. So now output two would be my monitor mix that only goes to me, and then output one would be my main mix that goes to front of house or wherever it needs to go so that it can go out through the main speakers. And then the final step of this is you would also need to go to all of your software instruments up here, long click them and then make sure they're loaded as mono instead of stereo. So right now this one's stereo, I would need to switch it to mono there we go, it's gonna load the plugin, and then I'll go back down to output and do the same thing. Go down to mono outputs, and then make this output one. So that way it's going to my main mix. So you'll only be able to see those mono outputs like that if you have it set up as a mono instrument. If it's stereo, it won't let you send it to one output like this. So you just need to make sure you change it to mono and then change those outputs. So once again, I would really suggest not doing something like that because now it only gives you a mono output and you just lose that depth of sound. I would say that you really should always be aiming to have a stereo signal for your main stage concert and not having a mono one. You'll start lacking some of that dimension and you won't really have that depth of sound if all speakers are just sending out the exact same signal rather than having a left signal and a right signal. All right, that's how you set up in-ear monitors inside of MainStage. If this video is helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.